Hello, welcome, I'm Matthew and this is Cult of the News. And first up this week is the announcement of Artisans of Splendent Vale, which is a quarter two release next year from Renegade Games coming to Kickstarter this September. Long ago, according to the Board Game Geek page, a splendent streak of crimson fell from the sky and scarred the valley from the earth. Not unlike what happened in the Transformers, but also not like it. The foliage that the light touched grew wild and fierce, and the wildlife grew larger and more fearsome. Now, people from distant lands have come to settle in the abundance of the valley, and though separate, they eventually cooperate to share their knowledge in a new town called Splendence. So, The Artisans of Splendent Vale is a cooperative adventure game set in a magically unique land and you, as a troop of artisans, will explore the beauty of the Vale while honing your individual crafts, overcoming challenges during tactical action stages played out on a specialised grid map. And all this while experiencing individual interludes to build your story separate from the group's collective tale in a game that claims that the key to success will be teamwork and careful strategy. Though my personal key to success has always been deception, Nikon. What's interesting to me about this one, other than the fact that it looks rather beautiful, is that it's from designer Nikki Valens, who has worked on an abundance of titles while at Fantasy Flight, including Mansions of Madness, Eldritch and Arkham Horror, and Legacy of Dragonhold. So there's some pretty impressive narrative gameplay pedigree coming before what looks like a new heartfelt opus in Artisans of Splendent Vale. <laughs> And now, since we actually forgot to write a segue into this episode's ad, here's me to say that this episode was made possible in part by the Secret Avengers extension for the Versus System two-player card game from Upper Deck. The Marvel Civil War rages on, but help has arrived in this second issue in the Civil War story arc for the Versus System two-player card game. This set bolsters Captain America's resistance forces, including the raw, unbridled power of the Young Avengers. You got your, your Luke Cage, whose bulletproof flesh means that he can take a pounding and still come out pounding. And he's also joined by the arrow-aiming Hawkeye, who packs a special bonus, especially when making ranged attacks. Then there's the Wiccan, who can remove counters from his allies by harnessing the awesome power of voice. Assemble your team of secret Avengers, join the battle, and feel their power in your hands with 55 playable cards and a handy-dandy little rule sheet. All available at the friendliest of local game stores and by following the link in this video's description to Upper Deck Store. Dot com. Next up is all about Restoration Games, who took it upon themselves to make a bombardment of announcements like they were going out of fashion. There's a lot to talk about and I'll focus on a few of the big hitters, starting with a new version of the classic 80s game of Fortress Destruction and Lost Pieces, Crossbows and Catapults, which is coming to Kickstarter next year. And this will have two versions, one taking aim at the mass market, and the other one that's going to be laying waste to the wallets of hobby gamers, which is also pretty exciting. Then there's Thunder Road Vendetta, which as well as being long rumoured and hopeful, is described as the revved up restoration of the 1986 game of mayhem and legal Mad Max distinction, where you'll be grabbing crew, rolling dice, shooting guns, and trying not to get wrecked. But the new version has what they are calling exciting additions, with random hazards as well as a whole modernized way that damage will work, which involves drawing damage tokens that could send you careening across the board. And there's more game choices with dice assignments, a command board, repairs we made, nitro, and something called an attack copter, which sounds reasonable. And then there's Unmatched Battle of Legends Volume 2, which was announced, featuring four new fighters taking the stage, including Yenenga, the 12th century warrior princess from the Ghana region, Achilles, the mighty Greek hero, Sun Wukong, the mischievous monkey king, and of course, Bloody Mary crawling out of a spooky mirror, which I personally am into. There's a mirror behind this curtain. Hmm. I just got weird about it. 
And while this unmatched set was something we expected, what I didn't expect was a digital version of Unmatched coming from a partnership with Akron Digital launching in December across platform. And this is hugely exciting for me because I love the game and I love playing it against far-flung friends in a tournament to the death. It's my kind of fun, possibly in some type of legally distinct Thunderdome. <laughs> Fire and Stone next, and what makes me want to talk about Fire and Stone is because it's coming from Pegasus Spiel and it's designed by Klaus Jürgen Werder who designed Carcassonne. Frustratingly not yet even on Board Game Geek as of the time of this recording, Fire and Stone is a game of prehistoric humans moving out of Africa to create settlements as they span across the globe. And as you migrate, you'll have to explore random location tiles in order to gain new skills and abilities. It's for two to four players. It takes a global view of the events as you place workers, look after your resources and go after hidden goals. It looks cool. If Klaus Jürgen Werder made it, it's a game that I'm interested in. So it's a game I'm interested in. <laughs> and next up we have Chaz, or as I like to call him, a knockoff, cheap imitation, third rate Richard Gere with a whole other type of board game news story. Thank you, Matthew. Apology accepted. Now, I am a lover of all sorts of board games, but one type of game that I hate are pirate games. But no, I'm not talking about games in which pirates swashbuckle their way across seven salty seas. No, no, those games are actually quite fun and they put a rainbow of smiles upon my tummy. Now, the pirate game that I am referring to is counterfeiting. Uh, specifically, the counterfeiting of board games, a problem for consumers and publishers alike, which has been festering on retail websites, including Amazon.com, for years. I once worked in customer service for a board game publisher and was astonished at how many emails we received from people complaining that the brand new board game they just purchased online was missing pieces, had printing errors, or was constructed of sub-quality cardboard that suffered from a condition referred to in the industry as falling apart immediately. But the worst thing was when I, unfortunately, couldn't help them because the problem product they purchased didn't actually come from our company. It was a counterfeit, being surreptitiously sold by uncreative, obnoxious crumb weasels who, if you think about all the trouble these hooligans go through to eke out a few bucks by recreating, printing, and shipping an inferior imitation of someone else's product, would probably, you know, just make a lot more money by simply just running a Kickstarter for their own game idea. But no, no, that would require a modicum of actual effort by these jerks who are apparently incapable of expending even the minimum creative energy necessary to make a constructive contribution to the gaming hobby. So instead, these irritating imposters would rather burn their time and resources reverse engineering another game's rules, graphic design, components, form factor, and print materials just so they can sponge a little bit of cash off unsuspecting consumers. So what can be done to deter the damage that these crappy cardboard con artists inflict upon our hobby? Well, fortunately, several things. Within the last year, online retail giant Amazon has established a counterfeit crimes unit dedicated to pursuing cases such as these, which has begun displaying the names and addresses of third-party sellers on their website, so sellers of bogus merchandise can no longer do so anonymously. This new policy, theoretically, opens the door for victimized publishers to pursue legal action against these salacious sellers of sewage. Now all we need is a publisher to actually take advantage of this awesome opportunity. Well, in June, Amazon and Asmodee Group took advantage of this awesome opportunity by jointly filing a lawsuit against both Samuel Katz, doing business as Crazy Leaf, and Gig Trading Incorporated, alleging that these no longer anonymous third-party sellers on Amazon sold counterfeit versions of two Dixit expansions, Dixit Daydreams and Revelations. Reportedly, Asmodee made this discovery after they themselves purchased copies of the expansions from the defendant's Amazon store and received counterfeit merchandise. <laughs> Whoopsie! I hope you kept the receipt, Asmodee, because it'll make for fantastic evidence when you're presented in court. But what can consumers do to protect themselves? Well, first and foremost, if an online retailer's price for a game seems too good to be true, possibly is. Especially if that retailer's name isn't familiar or is purposefully designed to be confused with a different established seller. 
Additionally, reading reviews of both the product and who is selling it can help to reveal red flags. Plus, checking the seller's history can provide clues. A seller with the lowest prices that just sprang up out of nowhere just a few days ago may not actually be offering the screaming hot deal that they appear to be. And if you suspect that you've purchased counterfeit merchandise, well, retain all the information you can about the seller and the transaction and do contact the publisher of the real version of the product. They likely won't be able to repair or replace what you've purchased, but any information that you can provide them with may help track down and remove the shoddy goods before they spread even further. Receiving customer complaints was actually one of the clues that alerted Asmodee to the situation with the Dixit expansions, spurring them to take action. It's my hope that these tips can help prevent you from making an online game purchase from a stupid rat-faced phony. And with that, let's send things right back to the one, the only, the original, human-faced Matthew Jude. <laughs> okay, so there's been a bunch of sequels and expansions announced, so here they are, starting with Dune Imperium Rise of Ix. Rise of Is? Rise of Nine. It's Ix. I'm going to go with Ix. It's got to be that. The expansion, which is coming at the end of the year, will have three new great houses with unique leader abilities, new technological advances, dreadnoughts to deploy, infiltrators to dispatch, and an epic game mode for what's described as a more intense and high stakes challenge. Arcane Wonders are bringing us a new expansion for the popular abstracted strategy game Onitama. And Light and Shadow is the third expansion for Onitama and will feature a new way to play and a new type of pawn called the Ninja, who moves secretly and hidden from your opponent until it... well, until it strikes. It has two ways to play, including a brand new asymmetrical game mode where one player has two ninjas moving in the shadows and the other has a more classic setup but with some lanterns to use to light up the board to expose the ninja threat. This looks like a real shake-up expansion to the game, so you can count me in. Next is Gloom Holding, which is an 18-card, no-table-needed version of Gloomhaven. It's a version of Gloomhaven that you can play just in the palm of your hands. And Gloomholden has its own plotline, so you won't be spoiled in any of Gloomhaven's campaign details. But it's not an official Cephal Fair game. It's a fan-made online labour of love, though it does have the blessing of Cephal Fair, who even granted permission to use the original Gloomhaven art, characters and lore. It's a free print and play handheld adventure and frankly it looks like it was made by a genius whose name happens to be Joe Gliffle. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this design take on a more official iteration at some point in the future, maybe even with a different theme. Fantasy Flight have announced the Spreading War expansion for the Lord of the Rings Journey into Middle-earth, which takes place in the proud kingdoms of Gondor and Rohan, and unlocks an all-new campaign with 15 scenarios, 6 new heroes, one of which is a giant bear, 20 enemy minis, 18 double-sided map tiles, new rolls, new terrain, and more, and all for release in October, so if you didn't want your journey to end, well, now it doesn't have to. <laughs> And for something that is near and dear to my little heart, Machi Koro has a sequel, Machi Koro 2, which will be out in October. Pandasaurus are bringing us this standalone sequel that holds on to the core Machi Koro concept but changes things up in SOME BIG WAYS, including an initial drafting round to set up your starting buildings, as a, well as a refined, streamlined and improved way that the market is created and landmarks work. I love Magic Koro, it's one of the games that got me into the hobby, I have a soft spot in my heart for it, so I'm excited for a sequel. And finally, there's some massive news for fans of World of Warcraft and or Pandemic, with Zeman's announcement of World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, a Pandemic System board game, which is a very long title. I'd have called it Pandemic the Scourge or something, Lich Demic, I don't know, they're not paying me. Z-Man released a teaser video to YouTube, which is very dramatic indeed, without really telling us much other than this is a Wrath of the Lich King based pandemic game with what looks like a totally different board to what you're used to seeing in a pandemic game, as well as what looks to be some really cool minis to play with, though the pertinent information was that it's being released sometime this year. 
How will this change up the classic pandemic game is unknown. No, no, it doesn't work there. That's too much. It's, ru it's ruined it. It was a good bit, but I've, we've, we've, we've taken it too far. But this looks like it's going to be a game based on the pandemic system with new and unique gameplay and not just a reskin of pandemic. I'm up for anything pandemic. So World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, a pandemic system board game is on my radar, even if it doesn't roll off the tongue. And that's the news. I'm Matthew Jude. Take care. <laughs>